question now from uh, Tim Sutherland. Um, I, I'm a little bit concerned that as a researcher and as a teacher of research at the, at the university, that um, so many of the assertions that are made are really not grounded in um, long qualitative studies or and use small n, small number studies, um, sort of fam familiar th examples, uh, examples of friends and family. I'm just wondering if anyone uh, on the other team has any examples of solid qualitative studies that have been done to support their position. I think that's my purpose to being on this panel. Um, so I think my purpose is to clarify what um, science says is illusion and truth. Um, so I'll speak from what the American Psychiatric, the American Academy of Pediatrics put out on their technical report. Um, it's a study done by pediatricians, doctors without any agenda other than making sure that their parent, that parents take good, good care of their, of their children. This, I'm gonna quote from, from their, um, the study. Actually, it's um, their um, evaluation of all the studies, even these small end studies. The, the weight of evidence gathered during several decades using diverse samples and diverse methodologies, qualitative or quantitative, is persuasive in demonstra demonstrating that there is no systematic difference between gay and non-gay parents. So there is actually a distinction. In emotional, but there is no distinction be between gay and non-gay parents in emotional health, parenting skills, and attitudes toward parenting. No data have pointed to any risk to children as a result of growing up in a family with one or more gay parents, that there is no harm. So you may say we have, may have small ends, but there is no data saying that there is actually any harm. A growing body of scientific literature demonstrates that children who grow up with one or two gay or lesbian parents fare as well in emotional, cognitive, social, and sexual functioning, as do children whose parents are heterosexual. Children's optimal development seems to be influenced more by the nature of their relationships and interactions within the family unit than by the particular structure form it takes. So rather than saying, this is what needs to happen, it's actually the, the, the what are the essence that, that help a, a family or children or relationships to endure. Uh, many lesbians and gay men are parents, and um, there are lots of concerns about them, of course, but there are studies and research has failed to provide a basis for any of the concerns regarding mental health or that a, a heterosexual woman is um, less, uh, that a lesbian woman is more, is less maternal than a heterosexual woman. Um, and that there really is no scientific basis for concluding that lesbian mothers or gay fathers are unfit parents on the basis of their sexual orientation. On the contrary, results of research suggest that lesbian and gay parents are as likely as heterosexual parents to provide supportive and healthy environments for their children. So in, in a sense, um, there is quite a lot of research making a distinction that there's not just heterosexuals and we confuse heterosexuals. That there are actually are many um, um, systematic ways of, of determining if someone's gen genital arousal or emotional arousal or romantic arousal is different than the arousal of heterosexuals. That um, um, it's actually been done for quite some time to make these certain distinctions. The phenomenon of, se of sexual orientation gets very confused with the idea of, of sexual, uh, sexuality, sexual identity, sexual behavior, gender identity, gender roles. And it's very, it gets very confusing when someone misplates or interchanges things that really should just be about sexual orientation when we're really talking about sexuality. And that within sexuality, there are lots of choices one can make, as I think your, 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 um, Palmyra was talking about. But within certain, sex, but there are parts of sexuality that there are no choices. In fact, the, the idea of sexual fluidity, there is some choice in a sense, but no one really chooses who they love but they find that, that they fall in love due to relationships, not just a specific gender. Um, I, all these questions that, and um, comments about a, heteros about a homosexual or bisexual orientation, I really would like to turn back to heterosexuals and ask them what choices do they have? Do they believe that they could actually enjoy sex with the same sex person? Do they believe they could enjoy sex um, or enjoy relationships with the same sex individual? That they could, under either forced or some choice idea, that to live a life that we have been forced to live, to be an ans answer the questions that you've been asked, asked of us for all these years. So the, the idea of being cho of a choice, um, I, g I guess I can see choice and behavior, but there are also consequences if you, if you, choose, if you stop a behavior. 
um, for, out of shame or out of fear. And uh, just with the remaining time, I just want to loop back to a couple of legal issues here. There was an offhand comment that Proposition 8 has been challenged in the California Supreme Court, and that's true, but it's completely irrelevant to anything that's going on in Utah. Uh, there's only one issue left in California, um, which is, was Proposition 8 approved by the proper procedures? See, in California, there are two ways to make a constitutional amendment. Uh, some can go straight to the voters, some have to go through the legislature. And the argument is that Proposition 8 should have gone through the legislature. It's an interesting legal issue, but that's about all it is for Utahns. In Utah, there's only one way to make a constitutional amendment. You have to put it through the legislature and then to the people. That applies to all of our amendments. Amendment 3 went through that process, so it's very clearly good law. That's time. 